The Japanese yen could be one of the most interesting investment opportunities in the second half of 2023. Let me show you why. In this chart, the orange line shows the difference in yield between the 10-year U.S. Treasury and the 10-year Japanese government bonds. The blue line shows the number of Japanese yen it took to equal $1. Other than the pandemic anomaly, you can see that the relationship has been pretty strong. As the orange line has gone down, meaning U.S. and Japanese interest rates have gotten closer, the blue line has also gone down meaning the yen has strengthened. That's because they're both very low risk government bonds. So when US treasuries offer a higher yield for the same risk, Japanese investors buy them, which strengthens the dollar. Then when the yields get closer and the return difference isn't as high, investors move money back into Japan, which strengthens the yen. This dynamic reached extreme levels since 2021 as the US rapidly increased interest rates and Japan didn't, causing the yen to weaken by almost 40% against the dollar. Over the next few years, I think that's likely to reverse. For the first time in 25 years, Japan has had sustained positive inflation above the government's target. That should allow them to remove yield curve control, which is like quantitative easing, by the end of this year. That would allow their long-term interest rates to rise. If there isn't a major recession in the US or China, and their inflation is sustained through 2024, they could also raise their short-term rates out of negative territory possibly next year. But even more impactful and predictable than what happens with Japanese rates is what could happen with U.S. rates. I'm not as convinced as the market that the U.S. is going to cut rates a lot this year, but I do think it's highly likely that they cut them by at least a few percentage points over the next two or three years. In this scenario, I expect the yen to appreciate against the U.S. dollar, which is why I recently started a small position, listen up here, listen up, in YCL, a 2x Japanese yen ETF. And I'll explain more about that here in a second. But when you have a second, check out my track record videos. I have a whole playlist of past times that I've seen dislocations in the market and I've told you about them. And if you would have mm, copied what I was doing, even though it's not financial advice, you would be in a very good spot. Now that's in the past. I can't promise anything going forward into the future, but I just had to tell you. Okay. Back to the yen. I'll readily admit that currencies are notoriously hard to predict in the short term. And this might not work well if the U.S. raises rates more than expected or either the U.S. or China go into a deep recession. But investing is never certain. And on a two or three year view, this one looks attractive to me. That's also why I'm starting small and leaving myself room to add on weakness if my timing is early. Also, if you follow my channel, you know that in the past, I've said I generally prefer investing in stocks over currencies. So why the yen instead of Japanese stocks this time? The short answer is because Japanese stocks are up 24% this year in local currency terms, and I don't have a strong opinion on them from here. There are a lot of good things going on in Japan that have led to that optimism, like many different reforms that I expect to be good for Japan in the long run. But I've seen this story before. 10 years ago, when Abe Shinzo was elected and started a massive new stimulus program, the stock market skyrocketed, only to realize it had gotten ahead of itself and then come back to earth over the next few years. I think these reforms are great, but I also think there's a chance the market is overestimating how quickly they'll impact company fundamentals. Or maybe not, I don't know. That's why I prefer to invest directly in the yen in this case. 